Okay, we're back here live at Strata Conference. This is SiliconANGLE's exclusive coverage of Riley Media Strata Conference in the heart of big data innovation in Silicon Valley in Santa Clara, California. This is theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the event, extract the signal from the noise. Uh, we've been at all uh, past three years of SAP Sapphire, and we're going to talk with SAP today. I'm John Furrier. I'm Dave Vellante of wikibon.org, and this is our in-memory segment. We're talking about the application of, of in-memory architectures, particularly in big data uh, generally and Hadoop specifically. We're here with Chris Hallenbach, who's a data warehouse architect for SAP. Chris, welcome to theCUBE, but thanks for coming by. Thank you very much, So to be here. Yeah, so we've been talking a lot about, uh, about in-memory. You guys had a keynote this morning. Uh, we were at uh, Sapphire, as John said, the last three years, two years ago was really the big HANA push, yeah. as you might recall. I think uh, Bill McDermott maybe even said big data once <laughs> uh, two years ago in his presentation. Last year it was only up to maybe 10 or 15 times. times. You guys haven't been over the top with big data washing. I'll, I'll give you credit for that. Um, at the same time, I, I think you know, uh, Jim Hageman Schnabe came on the, on the cube and he was saying, yeah, you know, big data, we're really about you know, fast data. John Furrier coined big fast data as SAP. But, so now, however, you guys have really you know, caught the wave. You're, you know, you're, you're hanging out to Superman's cape and uh, jumping right into the, to the big data. So give us an update on HANA. You know, what's happening here? What are you guys doing at the show? Well, I think Hannah's doing phenomenally well. We just came off an amazing year uh, with just fantastic revenues, we're ecstatic. But more so, it's been the adoption side and the various use cases. Because you can't really take a technology and then just say that's completely new, that does new things, and say, here's going to solve this problem. You need to come up with problems, and then, the, and then people find the right technology for it. And those situations are now happening. How can you take a system that can take you know, billions of records an hour and do advanced analytics on it? How can you do, and I don't actually even like in-memory because I think it's focusing on the technology. In-memory is the capability along with a lot of other, other deep, deep work that we've done. We well, have Hasso to blame to for get, that, by And the we way. do, <laughs> but to get to- Because that's all he talks blame, about, right? it's But cool to get stuff. to real time, <laughs> how can you actually take a system without doing huge amounts of data preparation? How can I take data in, stream it in real time, and do analytics on it at that second, right then? as well as dealing with data at different formats. I think people focus in on relational and clearly we can handle table data. But then what's unique about HANA versus building these complicated landscapes that we've gotten through NoSQL and other stuff is that HANA also can take that data that's accessed relationally and make it available multidimensionally with just the metadata layer to do that. We don't make a copy of it. So now I'm at getting the same access speeds as a multidimensional database that took hours and hours to roll up. I can also then deal with big tables. I can do dynamic columns on the fly with a big table implementation. So I can have a fixed table and then add columns dynamically on the fly for my marketing problems without having to work with engineering to pre-do that. We're getting into adding spatial analytics to the system. We also have extremely deep text analytics so I can take unstructured information, I can do language identification, stemming and tokenization libraries on the main 10 languages, so I can do deep sentiment analysis all in HANA, in real time, on data without data prep. Yeah, so I think that you're making a really good point. We, all, we like to talk about the tech, but it's all about the business value and exactly. the productivity impact that uh, systems like HANA can have on an organization. Um, I, I'm struck, I remember, I think it was last year at Sapphire, I think it was the I think it was the CEO, I don't think it was the CIO, I think it was the CEO of McKesson who was up talking about HANA. So you get, you know, SAP, you guys, you know, you're all about business, well, so we, you're touching a lot of different parts of the organization with this. Well, and that's what we do, we go, because now, sure, I'm a web startup and I can deal with a complex landscape with lots of different layers of caching and memcache and I can run graph database over here, but when you're at a big, when you're at a corporation you want to run this stuff and you're at McKesson, all of a sudden, I can't have different sysadmins for every, one, every different system out there, every database, everything. I want a system that does it, that has all the different functionality I need, but allows my engineers to write in the right language, whether it's a multidimensional dialect, SQL for single updates, or something that allows me to get at other information that's stored as a document, and I want to use JSON. And so HANA enables these developers to be incredibly efficient inside the organization by writing in the right paradigm that they want, but only having one database to manage. So I don't need to have all these different specialists on all these different systems out there and NoSQL variants, which are, many of which are awesome, but many companies don't want all those different pieces. They want one system that solves those problems and then can do that all in real time. But now our previous guest uh, was talking a little bit about the, you know, the greatness of SAP as an ecosystem player, I mean, yeah. you guys as an application provider. He's a small NoSQL you know, database you know, specialist. 
And he expressed frustration that, that Hannah's basically locking him out. He's closed, he can't bring his database and his use cases and his you know, small customer base and take advantage of, of Hannah. What's your uh, response to that, SAP's philosophy? Will you open that up for other you know, sort of no, no SQL databases? Why or why not? What's the, what's the reasoning and the philosophy behind the current posture? First of all, establish you know, what, your, what your policy is I, there. And it's then, funny, I'd say it's totally opposite because yeah. I, Coming from, I mean, ours actually to embrace other databases, so a lot of the work we're doing. I mean, historically, that's the case, right? Yeah, so we've opened up our APIs to third parties that are directly competing on our BI layer. We've opened it up, I'm working directly with a lot of independent software vendors, ISVs, to port their applications to HANA that make exact copies like competitive products with our own. And now we're opening it up, eventually moving into, we've talked a lot about starting to work towards data federation and other pieces that will tie into all the other databases so that you can work with HANA and you can get data out of other systems or allow them to get data out of HANA. So we're trying to build and be extremely open in our ecosystem. Now I think the part of that might have been more on the application side and clearly there is when you're writing an ERP system, you need to be on a asset compliant system that can do transactions and handle that type of load. And, and those, that's a different channel, obviously. I'm on the database world, and I think in that world, yeah, the major players are out there that you have, you know, the Oracles and yeah, IBM, sure. and obviously our own Sybase ASE, and we've extended that to HANA, but that's, you know, that's so a pretty I, so, rare But just piece. to clarify, so, so the SAP's approach is open. Completely. Through your APIs, I can bring any NoSQL database into HANA and apply whatever use cases I want from my customers, right? And it's a matter yeah. of you know, just interacting with your API, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah, and our APIs are open. All right, well, so you hit her here. So, um, yeah. now I want to talk about Intel a little bit. You guys, um, you saw the Intel uh, uh, distro announcement. Mm -hmm. You guys have just done the keynote. Uh, SAP and Intel talking together. So, talk a little bit more about you know Intel. You guys have obviously made the bet. I mean, everybody's betting on Intel, obviously. But what does that mean for you? And and what do you make of this uh, this Rhino distribution? What does that all mean? Well, I think I mean it, Han itself was a five year really co innovation project with Intel to leverage mm -hmm. a lot of what we do is how do you move and pipeline data through the different memory architectures, the different caching levels within the chipsets now. And to do that effectively and do extremely, you have to have very low level access to the instruction set and then ultimately to do vector-based processing. So you can do huge numbers of integers can be processed in a single clock cycle. You can only do that with us, you can only, you kind of got to pick your horse there. We chose Intel, they've been a phenomenal partner. They're actually taking those same types of techniques that we innovated with HANA with them and they're actually bringing that to Hadoop. And by doing that, so people at the enterprise level are now embracing and saying, we see that Hadoop fits in our infrastructure and they want to do that, but then when you start encrypting the data, you have to have it at rest. Hadoop, which not always the fastest to begin with, all of a sudden gets incredibly slow. Intel's yeah, work very processor intensive, is you know, bringing that back mm -hmm. and making that back into acceptable ways, but bringing that data so you can have data security and all the different issues you need around data governance into and making that really acceptable by putting the processing power they have behind it. And what we're doing with them is actually bringing the products together so you can have real time when you need it with HANA and the speed and power, but then when you have lower value density data that you want in Hadoop, or you have just massive other data that you want to archive that you can use the two together, but that the IT departments, now that it's being more broadly adopted, don't have to know how to write HiveQL, don't if they want to get data out, don't know how to write pig scripts, don't know how to write full text sentiment analysis, map reduce jobs down in data. I can do that between the tool set that they have and we have and that we're integrating at over time is to actually make that possible. So generalized IT departments with standard drag and drop type ETL type movements are working and doing advanced work on Hadoop and on HANA, making them work together yeah, in an integrated function. Of, of, Absolutely, of, yeah. and making this ownable mm -hmm. by enterprises that have more broad skill sets within their IT department. Chris, talk about uh, HANA and, and, and SAP in context, because obviously they don't hype up a lot. We, Jim Schnabe said to us, said to me and Dave at, uh, on a one-on-one -on -one last year, you know, we like big data, but you know, it's, we don't want to hype up, uh, and, and SAP's a very buttoned up conservative company. But his point was, yeah, of course, um, but it's really hype market. Uh, and, and SAP doesn't usually get a lot of credit as being a big data player, when in reality, <laughs> you guys are out there. Can you just talk about you know, the, some of the big data mojo that SAP has? Yeah, it's funny. We present it, and then everyone goes, wait, you're one of the only companies we've ever found that actually has every single piece required to do all this? Why don't you talk about it? And we do seem to have... I think we have... said that on theCUBE, too, at Sapphire. So, but <laughs> that's it, the point. You have a lot of that, all that. Yeah, so all I've been doing is analysts. 
interviews and working with, with them, and they all come back with the same thing. Is, and I think that's a function, really, we say let's not use the big data. We talk about that and say let's not, let's not be perceived of as hype, we want to be given credit for what we've done. So you have HANA at that core allowing you to do, and we have even up to you know, petabyte instances that you, people can come look at, actually the instances running here in Santa Clara, that people can look at that runs a petabyte of raw data and you can query it doing tens of thousands of queries per hour with nothing, you know, a petabyte in less than three seconds. A majority of queries, worst query three and a half seconds. I asked, I asked Billy Bosworth, the CEO of Datastacks, and we have, yeah. we're short on time, we have like 20 seconds left, so I'll ask you this. Uh, for all the noise that's out in the market, and there is a lot of noise, you walk out here and you see a lot of action going on, and it's good action, it's just growth yeah. in the marketplace, um, but there's a lot of noise. So what do you say to people when they say, how should I squint through the noise to look for the signal? What would you advise them? I actually advise them to come talk to us. And I mean that by, uh, you're not going to find that written down because we do not do a good job necessarily at some times. But a little self-serving. Uh. No, of course it is. But, and, I, and I think there's other people to talk to, but when it comes to SAP. Talk to us last. Having, uh, don't having, talk to us, we're not really. Yeah, having we the don't pieces. Want you business. That no, to I mean, I mean, your I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean that, data that's, storage that's a good, that's a good, of course you're not going to say don't talk to SAP, but no, especially like in looking for use cases, like specific data points, like number of deployments, what, do you, what should they look for for evidence within SAP? So when they do come talk to you, uh, what are you presenting to them so you can show them the signal? Is it number of deployments? Is it certain architectures? I was really was my question was looking for more, you know, meat on the bone. You're like, okay, there's all this noise. Where's the signal? And, and what, yeah, what, we do. What can you we show do them? number of deployments. We show different types of use cases that we're now supporting in reference architectures that are actually implemented out there, solving problems that people have been trying to do. How do I do streaming information off of like gaming systems and do real time promotions when you die, like within a millisecond, yeah. using statistical analysis? How do you wire that system together? And we have those in production, and we have those reference architectures and then the references for them to check out. Yeah. And we post a lot of that on sapHANA.com, as well as, but it's not just about HANA, there's a whole ecosystem of yeah. products to support it, and we present those out to them. Well, I got to say, we were very impressed. Past two years in particular, uh, SAP really lays out kind of the gold standard, because they had, you know, with the SAP announcement, they really laid out this whole in-memory, speed of business was a great message. And then last year, you guys laid out a lot of use cases. And again, that's what, we're, what we recommend to folks, saying, hey, when you want to squint through the noise, just look for the meat on the bone, look for the sizzle and the steak. Um, so, and you guys are doing a good job. So with that, any teaser for this year's uh, SAP Sapphire that you can talk about <laughs> without and Jonathan and Becker going crazy about Without me uh, getting crazy yeah. in trouble? <laughs> yeah, let's, just, let's avoid that. Um, I mean, I, high level, can you just talk about a little bit of what SAP Sapphire is going to focus on this year? Last year was like, examples, you had customers up there, uh, McDermott and Schnabe were awesome, and you guys laid out essentially follow up to the, to the year before, which was vision and, and I think and a lot of people have been clamoring around, what is this real-time data platform? You have all of these great assets for, for moving data, for analyzing data, both, you know, multi, multi petabyte systems that we have through let's say Cybus IQ and speed on ASC for transactional. Well, how are you guys actually going to bring all these together? And we said that's the real time data platform. And fair enough, people said, there's not, a, you haven't really told us how that all comes together. And that's really what's coming out at Sapphire, which is here's the things we've delivered, the roadmap, a lot of things that will be delivered that are actually coming out right then at Sapphire that explains exactly how all of those come together along with third party yeah. systems and databases all in an ecosystem that companies can use to solve yeah. all the different data problems. And you got have. success factors and you got some you know, business on demand needs to kind of yeah. be cobbled together. So we're expecting some good news there. Again, we'll see you guys as a Sapphire, SAP, uh, not always getting all the credit for um, a lot of the sizzle, uh, the, the sizzle out there, but they have the stake. Um, we've seen it at Sapphire, we've been there three years, we'll be there this year. This is theCUBE, I'm John Furrier, we're with SAP, we're at uh, Strata Conference, stuff with big data, HANA, real time, in memory, all that great stuff. So we'll be right back with our next guest at this short break. Thank you. <laughs>